Um, I thank my colleagues and I uh, thank Senator Whitehouse for your work on this. You know, the question that is facing, I think, all of us and is troubling Americans is an erosion of confidence in our institutions. Uh, we're seeing that uh, with a lot of erosion and confidence in the legislature, which is here to serve the interests of the people we all represent. Uh, it is also sometimes with the executive, huge battles there. And of course, January 6th was an indication that the norms that have guided us throughout our history, and that is the peaceful transfer of power after the people of this country make a decision about who shall be their elected leader. That's all been challenged. And now we have the Supreme Court. And the court has a incredibly important role in the preservation of our democracy because it has the capacity to make decisions about legislative actions and whether what the legislature did fits within the parameters of the Constitution. And it's an awesome responsibility. And as my colleagues have said, I have an enormous amount of reverence for the institution of the judiciary, and I have an enormous amount of reverence for the particular role of the United States Supreme Court. And I have immense respect for the individuals who have achieved that status of being a member of the United States Supreme Court. They serve an important institution. They have a very important job. But they're not more important as individuals than any other American. They're not. They have more responsibility. They have a special obligation as justices of the Supreme Court, but they're not above the law. This is not exactly about whether there are legal questions involved, but it is about whether they accept the responsibility that goes with representing an institution that must maintain the credibility of the American people in order to have the, the people that they serve respect their decisions. And we have a situation on the Supreme Court now where within our judiciary, we have 850 judges at all different levels. Every single one of those judges is subject to rules that are designed to try to instill public confidence. And those rules require those judges to make financial disclosures. That includes whether they have been the beneficiary of gifts. There's nine people in this country who are in the judiciary that don't adhere to those rules, that don't believe it's their burden to share and disclose with the American people what gifts they've received. And those are the nine justices of the United States Supreme Court. That's outrageous. You know, when I talk to Vermonters about this, and I say, do you think that if a justice of the Vermont Supreme Court or a justice of the United States Supreme Court should be required to let you know and the public know if they got private jet travel to a location to get on a private yacht to take a private vacation, they have an obligation to disclose that. And Vermonters look at me in dismay and they say, Peter, are you serious? They can do that? This is not about disclosure. This is like astonishment that somebody in a position of authority who they know, an everyday Vermonter knows, is getting the offer of that free air travel on a private jet, who's getting that offer of a free yacht trip and vacation in the Indonesian islands, has nothing to do with who they are as persons. It has to do with who they are because of their responsibility and role as the United States Supreme Court Justice. Vermonters just can't believe it. So this question of gifts in the bare minimum of having to disclose it, 
How is it, how is it even a question? And you know, I served in the House, as you know, Mr. President, and in 2011, I and several of my colleagues wrote a letter inquiring about these gifts and why is it that they didn't have to be disclosed. This has been going on for far too long. There's another matter of personal respect. The Supreme Court justices, all of them, have the highest position in the judiciary. And all of those other 850 judges under them, are they not entitled to expect that what is required of them will be accepted by those nine members? And I have to confess enormous dismay that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who's in the position to bring those other eight justices together and say, hey, let's deal with this. Why are we creating this problem when it does so much to undercut public confidence in what it is we're trying to do? It hasn't done it. it. Hasn't done it. So we have to do it. And I believe that the judiciary not just the 850 members of judicial branch, but 859 members of the judicial branch should all be subject to the same disclosure rules. And let me tell you, if they disclose these gifts, maybe they won't take these gifts, because actually, what's the point? I mean, really, this is where I go back to the Vermonters I talk to, who say, Peter, what's the deal? You literally can take an all expense paid vacation and this person thinks it's not gonna influence them and they wanna know what I've been smoking, seriously. So what we're doing here is pretty modest, bare bones, but even if it's bare bones and modest, it's absolutely essential to the first step that we take in our effort to restore the confidence of the people of this country, Republicans, Democrats, independents, that our judiciary is all about serving them, not benefiting individually by their positions. And I yield uh, to my colleague from Rhode Island, Senator Whitehouse. 